Welcome back to another video. Right now I'm heading over to see some friends of mine. I've known them for about 25 years, Mark and Kim. They live in my old neighborhood where I lived way back in the 90s. They're having an electrical problem over by their dock. So I'm going there to find out exactly what the problem is and see if I can help them out. And we're almost there. Okay, we're here. And as you can see, there is a mansion going in next door. It's ridiculous. It's a monstrosity. Let's go around back. He should be in the back working on this deck that he's trying to replace. Who needs a house that big? Unreal. Mark! Alright, what's the problem now? My dock's a mess. I'm pulling the boards off so I can replace it and put a new dock in. Let me just tilt this camera down a hand so they can see it. Alright. And then I came across this. It's the electrical pipe. It's cracked, yeah, I see it's cracked. cracked. Right on the top. Look at how that settled. My yeah. god. Well, 20 something years later that was added, right? You think that's why it cracked because of the stress on it? No. Anyway, I don't know what to do with it. Well, the problem is whoever did this was stupid because they embedded that LB inside that concrete. Instead of the wire going directly through that LB, there's a chance that they may have spliced it from that point over to the boat lift. I see. So I don't know if I'd want to cut this line down here. It does get moisture in there sometimes. Because if I cut it, I want to be able to pull the wires out from over here so I could run a whole new line maybe over the wall directly to that spot. Okay. But I don't want to take that chance. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to cut it right after that LB. And after I cut it, there's enough there. Let's take a closer look here. If I cut right where it's cracked, I see. Uh, there's enough, maybe three quarters of an inch, where I could slide a coupling on. I'll be able to pull everything off of it, all the conduit and that flex. And we'll slide a new pipe over the wiring and glue it in position. So the first thing we need to do is go to the electrical panel. I want to turn off the power to the boat lift. It should be a 240 volt, 30 amp. And I want to shut off the power to that 120 volt receptacle, which is a GFCI. Put 20 above it to off and push the, the top one to off. So everything is off except your condensing unit. Good, cover it up. Let's get all the tools and go around back. Power's off, but we're going to verify it first using the key so you can put the key in. Make sure the lift doesn't go up and down. Try the switches. All right, so that's the right one, good. All right, let's take the screws out of this. Be careful with this cover, you see this? All this fiberglass gets into your hand because it's so old. Is that why I'm doing it? Yeah. <laughs> Tim, would you do me a favor and go get me some gloves? Give me this. Yes, please. <laughs> you just catch the screws. Okay. Okay. All the covers is going to want to go. Okay, very carefully just... I got it. Okay, looks good inside. Hold it from the inside where it's not rotten. Hopefully you can see that. So what we need to do... This kind of do it here goes to the other piling for the other motor. Right here is a power coming in. We have our two hot lines, the red and the black, and we got the ground. So we're going to have to test from here first. Let me have that wonderful tester. Oh, it's over here. I don't have my equipment with me, so I'm going to be using his. We have Harbor Freight Special. There we go. Put it right there, 750. Wow, look at the test leads. These are quality. This is high-end equipment right here. Nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. You ready? Don't move. We got nada, baby. Now, let's go to ground. 
each leg to ground. Nothing. All right, so now I need to take each one of these wires out, loosen these screws on the terminal block. I think that's loose enough. Pull that one out this way. Now let's take out the ground wire. Off that ground bar. All right, so now we're able to pull out these wires. Next, we're going to open up right here. Let's hold that right there. Wow, this is pretty corroded. No, all right. All right, that's not gonna come off. Now, we're gonna be changing this cover because the seal is not that good on it. And we're going to be changing the GFCI. So let's just pull the cover off. If it breaks, it breaks. It doesn't make a difference. All right, now I can grab pliers and get the head of these to turn, and hopefully they do not snap off in those openings. Let's see if this comes off, it should. Oh, that is not good. That is not good. Oh, both of them snapped. That is not a good thing. No. Look at this, look at this, guys. Totally rotten from the salt water. Totally rotten. Yeah, it's a mess. That is a mess. The only thing that looks decent is the wires. The wires look pretty good, and nothing wrong with those. But the problem is, we could pull the wire straight from there. So we're gonna have to disconnect each one of these wire nuts so we can pull this entire thing off. All right, we're gonna need a new box here too. This is not good. All right, so let me disconnect this and then we'll go on to the next step. Everything is out of this box. And over here, what we have to do is make a cut very carefully using a hacksaw blade right in front of my fingernail all the way around. We do not wanna cut all the way through because we don't wanna risk damaging the insulation on the wires. You wanna cut maybe halfway through so we can grab this pipe and bend it until it snaps right where the cut was made. Once it snaps, you can grab the PVC pipe and pull it straight off and the wires will remain, but the conduit will slide off the wires all the way to the end to where it gets to this point right over here. Take a hacksaw and very carefully going to take a little bit of time to do this right. I just don't want to go all the way through. Let's go underneath. It has to break on that line. And in case water went inside here, which I think it did, we're going to be putting a shop back on this pipe and making it really tight. I'll shove the wires inside the vacuum cleaner hose and then we'll just hold this tight to suck any water out of here. The other end is open by the electrical panel, so it should draw in any water that's in there. Pull this all the way out so I can cut right here to get rid of this box. With this disconnected, I can keep all these wires together now and slide this down towards the water and pull the conduit with the flex off of these wires. Yep, beautiful baby. And you can see the wires are inside. Keep pulling. There it goes. I can see everything looks good here so far. Now he's just gonna pull that off. And what I'm gonna do is get it a little further. I'm gonna pull the wiring towards the house because I don't want it to fall in the water. Got him. All right. So now we have the wiring. We're gonna dry it up. Put the shop back on that fitting right there. Make sure there's no water inside. Make sure there's no cuts to the insulation. If there is, we'll have to touch them up with some electrical tape. And then we're gonna clean up that fitting, round it off, put a bevel so I could slide on a coupling. You can see the wires. There's just a little bit of damage to the clear plastic coating that's on the wire. You have the copper, then you have the insulation on the wire, and then there's like a clear coating. And that's what you see right here. We don't see any problems with the wire. Nothing's been cut. I moved them all around to make sure. The next step, we're going to put a little bit of a bevel on here, and then I'm going to use PVC cement 
to put on a coupling so we can slide on a whole new section over these wires. As you can see, we now have a new weather resistant box in place, screwed in with stainless steel screws. We have liquid tight connections going into the box. I'm going to take the PVC cement and connect that coupling onto the flex. And then the coupling is going to go onto a straight length of PVC that ties back into right here. That's good. Soften things up and get it prepped. Hold the other side of that line there, thank you. on here let's put some on here push this together okay now let's put some on here and some on here keep rubbing until the numbers disappear the writing let's work that in that's good all right, hold it. Let's put just a dab more on this side. You know this heavy gray cement? It's so damn thick that it doesn't even apply good. See, it leaves like a spot that was missed right there. Hold it. Just spread it a little bit there. All right, so push this together and give it a twist. Hold it right there for a second. Push it together tight. Okay, so that's good. Over here, you can see I have the pipe inserted. Keep pushing this through, and Mark should have it come out of the conduit on the other side, or the flex. The flex on the other side is just a little too long. I'm going to trim it down about two inches, and when I push this together, it should stick out about four or five inches. Working in really good. Let's put some cleaner on here. Rotate the pipe slightly. Hopefully you guys can see this. When you're wearing a GoPro, it's very hard to tell where it's looking. I'll move my head around so you can see. That looks good. A little more over here. Underneath, you're gonna pull on the wire when I tell you. All right, let's put extra glue on here. I wanna make sure the damn thing goes on. Let's rotate this now. Okay, pull it, baby. Go, go, yeah, twist it, twist it. A little bit more. Good, right there, don't move. Hold it. We are together, so that's good. No more broken pipe. Let this sit for a minute, hold it in position. So now we have this end right over here. You see the box is now in perfectly. Liquid tight on the top, liquid tight on the bottom. Clamp within a few inches of this box to keep things from moving. And these wires will go higher if you pull on them. We're going to connect up the GFCI, then put this back and we'll be good to go. Right over here is the weather rated GFCI and you can see all the connections. The two pigtails here, the black and the red, go up to the boat lift control box and you can see all the grounds connected together, the two greens. One goes up to the control box, one ground wire goes to the metal box itself and the other ground off to the GFCI. Let me put the cover back on and turn on the power. And here's what it looks like all finished. And in case you're wondering, that PVC pipe is just laying on top of the seawall. When the new dock is installed, it's going to be secured to the dock using straps. And you can see the WR rating since we're right next to the water. And let's try the lift. No problem. And that's it. Mark is now a happy camper. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.